I'm Egon von Greys of Matron Asset Management, and uh, I'm very pleased we are here at the Edelmetallmesse in, in Munich. I'm very pleased to be here with uh, Ronny Stoeffler, who is a very old friend. You've been, I, I've known you since you were a little boy almost. <laughs> 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 uh, so, uh, and now you're a big man and big in the gold industry, uh, and I've seen how you created a, a great company uh, with Incrementum and with the gold reporting, Gold We Trust. And so I thought we'd start by you telling us a little bit uh, how that all came about. Well, it's a long story. Yeah. <laughs> Actually, I started uh, writing my first report on gold in Gold We Trust when I was a little analyst sitting in a bank in Vienna. And I thought, you know, I would like to write about gold and, and wrote the first special report. And Did you know why you wanted to write about gold? Because I, I had an investment in a mining company that did extremely well and I, I was really lucky to, 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 to have invested in that company very early on, a junior explorer that then became one of the largest mines in Canada. Um, but it wasn't because of my analytical skills, I was just plain lucky. Yeah. Um, but I got somehow interested uh, in the gold space and my, my, my former boss said, just go ahead, gold is always interesting. And then I started writing about gold and I, and I had no clue about the fascination of gold and, 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 and the history of gold. Mm -hmm. Gold is basically about everything. It's about um, it's about money, it's about the history of money, it's about our monetary system, it's about inflation, it's about geopolitics, it's about different cultures and religions. It's really about everything, yeah? And the more you read about it, the more fascinated you get. And that's the yeah. reason why 13 years afterwards, I'm still writing about gold. And every year, we are writing between two and 400 pages of research about gold. And it continues to, to fascinate me every day. Yeah. For the readers who don't, or, or, or listeners who don't know about your report, just uh, tell us, because I mean, that's a fantastic report that now the whole world reads. Uh. Yeah, it's called In Gold We Trust. Yeah. Um, it's available in German and in English in an extended version, so that's really the long version. You have to mm. take at least a weekend off to study it. And there's also a compact version. And uh, starting this year, we also published it uh, in China. So there's a Mandarin translation of the report. We're publishing chart books of the report. And the report was downloaded 1.8 million times this year. So it's, it's really a big report read all over the world. Um, we're uh, very, very, very happy to, to also make, you know, a little contribution. To, to educating yeah. people about sound money and about yeah. our monetary system and the, the consequences of this extreme monetary policy and this, this monetary experiment that we're all a yeah. part of. Yeah. Yeah. So, so that's something that I truly enjoy, really telling the people, okay, I mean, the situation is, I would say, quite, quite dire, quite dramatic, and gold historically has always been a pretty good insurance policy in such scenarios. Yeah, yeah. Now, you know, this is the way we came into gold, really, because I, I was, uh, I've been banking, I've been in corporate life. My interest has always been risk, understanding risk and analyzing the downside. I would say, you know, the, the, the upside takes care of itself, but the downside is what you've got to worry about, uh, because that's what can kill you. Um, so I came into gold from the point of view, analyzing the risks in the world. Uh, and saying that this can't be solved, this problem, uh, it's just too big. And I, that was already in the 90s, so, and then in the early 2000s, we bought gold for ourselves first in, in, in a bigger way, and some friends we advised, and then uh, a few years later, we opened up the company for outside people to help them to preserve wealth uh, by owning physical gold outside the banking system. And of course, as you know, I see the risks as uh, greater than ever now in history. We are at a unique uh, situation and, and therefore, in my view, there is no solution. Uh, but I would like to start to ask you, what do you think about, what was your view about the end game? If there, there, of course, there's no end game. I, you know, I always take the example of something like, uh, you know, the world doesn't go on, on under. It just, it just transforms into something different for a while. Uh, and yeah, I, I've lived a long time in England, so I take the example of Eton School. Eton School has been there for 550 years, a bit more. Um, and, you know, it's gone through revolutions, it's gone through uh, recessions, depressions, etc., and it's still there. And these, as you see, all the established things 
continue in a different form maybe and so is the same with the world but I think it will be dif different for, for a few years. How do you see this now? Uh, the whole, you know, the debt situation, uh, uh, the, I mean, the, the, the political situation, how do you see it playing out in, in the next year? And do you actually see an end game or that something will, will happen now which will be dramatic? Well, perhaps we're also already at the beginning of this end game, yeah? Um, um, people always ask me, what's the crisis going to be like? And I said, probably we are in the middle of this crisis, yeah? And, 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 and uh, I think it would be naive to think that the next crisis crash, whatever, is going to be similar to the 2008 crisis. Yeah? From my point of view, um, it won't necessarily only be a financial crisis, it might be a currency or a monetary crisis, yeah? which will lead to a, let's put it in a diplomatic way, a reallocation of our monetary system. Yeah? Mm. So I think, you know, since 2008, yeah, what, what did central banks do? They created 18 trillion US dollars out of thin air. Um, they lowered interest rates. Um, now the Federal Reserve tried with their quantitative tightening and some, some rate hikes to go back to, to a more normal um, uh, uh, policy, but they failed dramatically. Yeah? And, you know, just a couple of, of months after they started quantitative tightening, they basically had to do this monetary U-turn. Yeah? And now they're starting again with quantitative easing. Yeah? The balance sheet rose by more than 200 billion within two weeks. Yeah although they don't call it quantitative easing, yeah. of course. So, um, I think... Plumbing, it's, it's, uh, plumbing, I saw, was the one word. Yes, was your, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, just fixing the plumbing a bit. Yeah, and you know, plumbers nowadays are, are really expensive. Yeah, 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 so, yeah. Um, uh, it seems that, and that's, that's also the title of, 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 of the presentation that I will uh, give today, from my point of view, gold is something like the seventh sense of financial market. So, the breakout in gold, um, didn't just come because, you know, uh, for technical reasons. I think that gold is kind of feeling and, and, and sniffing out that there's recession risk around, uh, that recession risks are actually pretty high, that inflation might finally really become a concern, and that the markets um, are discounting much, much more aggressive um, central bank policy. Yeah? Yeah. So, so those three risks are definitely in the market and gold is discounting that. So coming back to your question about the end game, I think central banks for a good reason hold significant amounts of gold. It's not only, you know, the Americans holding more than 8,000 tons, uh, the well, Euro you system. If you believe it. <laughs> I think it's there, yeah. yeah, yeah I, 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 you're, you're optimistic. <laughs> <yeah. laughs> I um, doubt it. I doubt it. The euro system holds more than 10,000 tons of gold. The IMF, for some reason, holds more than 3,000 tons of gold. Uh, the Chinese are buying like crazy. Uh, Russia is buying every ounce they can get. It's Turkey. It's India. And now it's even countries from from the euro uh, from 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 the European Union, like Poland and Hungary, yeah. buying gold. Yeah. And reallocating their gold reserves. Actually, it was very interesting to see that the Dutch National Bank, um, they, they put out an article that was really, yeah, they basically said that, that gold is the trust anchor yeah. um, if everything else falls down. Yeah, that's and they're clear. moving yeah. their central bank yes. gold, more than 600 tons of gold, into a new facility. So I think those are all signs that, that Many different market participants are kind of preparing for some sort of an of an end game. Yeah, mm -hmm. if it's gonna be highly deflationary, highly uh, inflationary, if it's gonna be massive financial repression, I don't know. Perhaps it's 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 a combination of all that. Yeah, but I think that gold should play a major role in that new currency system. You know. I, uh, in the presentation uh, that I will give today here at the, uh, at the uh, exhibition here, the gold exhibition here in, in Munich, uh, I've, uh, I'm going to talk about the 5th, the August 2019 being very similar to August 1971 when Nixon let go of the, of the gold backing of the dollar. And I, I see all the statements of the central bank is now showing that they are in panic mode. You know, it, it started with uh, Draghi say we'll do, we said it a few times before, 
we'll do what it takes, whatever it takes, we're going to do. And then the U.S. started with, uh, with their uh, uh, over, overnight repos, and then it became you know, the, the POMOS, the, lo the, the longer, which is basically just a new form of QE. So you're talking about now you know, billions and billions being printed, and the, 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 the POMO, the, uh, which is the real QE, is 60 billion now, the two monthly. Uh, so they, I think there is something happening, and they called it initially, like, like Nixon said in 71, temporarily we're now closing the gold window. It's just temporarily. Here we are, you and I, almost 50 years later, and it's still temporary. And it's the same thing. They said this is a temporary plumbing fixing the system. I think they're panicking. I think they're seeing things which I and you, I'm sure, have suspected for quite a long time. There is something rotten in, in, in the state of the U.S. and in the state of the world. There is something rotten with the financial system, and we know that. You know, and it's whether it's just your German, your, 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 the German banks of, of the country where, where we are today, uh, that you know, the, the Deutsche and the Commerce Bank, etc., that have totally bankrupt balance sheets. Uh, or if also the U.S. system is now under pressure, which it looks like, because that liquidity pressure seems to be uh, quite domestic for the time being in the U.S. Uh, and a uh, shortage of cash, really. So I think the system is under pressure. I think the central bankers are panicking, uh, and I think Lagarde is coming in at the time which suits her because she's an elitist. Um, she is someone who is going to take power. And she's going to, she's already telling, you know, the various leaders of the countries, you do this, you know, you start spending more money <laughs> and cut taxes. Uh, and um, uh, so I, I think now she, and she knows the task she has with Germany in, uh, in trouble, with obviously Italy and uh, Greece we know, and Spain, et cetera, et cetera. I think she will probably be seen as, at, at the end of this, She'll be the biggest money printer in the world, uh, um, Lagarde, in, in coming years, which obviously also means that there will be real problems in the system. She might probably make Draghi look like a hawk. Yeah. So, so she will be so dovish, so so aggressive in her central bank policy. Yeah. Um, I think it's a it's a different game with her. Yeah. yeah. Um, it's very interesting to see her testimony in front of the European Parliament. She basically lays out the case. There was an article um, uh, in the Financial Times where she actually sta states that we have to think about uh, inflation targets. We should rise. Uh, we should raise the, the inflation targets, of course, temporarily. Um, we should consider a strategic review of our policies even paying money directly on the bank accounts of people. Yeah? So this is not yeah. you know, some conspiracy nuts writing about it on the blog. It's in the Financial Times and it's actually based on comments, comments from Madame Lagarde. Yeah. I think she's a highly political decision. It's for a good reason that not Jens Weidmann uh, became the successor of, uh, of, of, of Draghi. And, and actually, you know, she's a lawyer and her job at the IMF was bailing out bankrupt banana republics yeah mm. so so that's basically what she did yeah? yeah so she might continue with that in the eurozone so from my point of view it's it's actually quite frightening um, she's talking about green bonds she's talking about much more um, fiscal stimulus uh, as, as you rightly said so from my point of view it's it will be much, much more aggressive than, 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 than previously. And mm -hmm. we have to say, you know, Draghi went out of office without raising interest rates at least one time. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah, uh, it's going to be interesting. And, 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 and it's pretty, pretty similar in the United States. Uh, normally, within the course of a recession, interest rates are lowered 500 basis points. Yeah. So on a relative basis, the Federal Reserve has much more room to, to maneuver than, than mm. the ECB. Um, but still, there were papers uh, published quite recently about negative rates in the US, what it would do to the banking system. And actually, um, it was surprisingly very positive comments coming out of the Federal Reserve in San Francisco in this study. So the market is pre being prepared for much more aggressive central bank policy, for more fiscal stimulus. And the thing with fiscal stimulus, but also with um, concepts like helicopter money, 
MMT, somebody called it uh, the Mugabe Maduro theory of money. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, it will have a much more direct uh, consequence for inflation. So while quantita traditional quantitative easing tried to create inflation by the banking system, MMT but also fiscal stimulus will have a much more dramatic impact on, on inflation numbers. Of course they will do, and, and we will have high inflation, and you know, I've, I lived in the 1970s, I was started working in 69, so, and I saw gold going up, and I saw, I lived in the UK, I saw inflation going to 15, 17% for 7, 8 years, I saw my first mortgage went up to 21%, so I, I've seen it all, and, and how many people today could cope with, it, with interest rates of 21% on their mortgage, not some, one single person. Uh, but, but I, I think what we're going to see now, yes, we're going to see money printing, but I think we're getting to the uh, point of saturation now. You know, there is a point when more mo worthless money, because that's what, all it is. Every single piece of paper or electronic money that's been cre created has zero value, we, and thus lowers the, the rest of or the value of the, or the rest of the money. So therefore, of course, the one who stands near, nearest the till and gets it first, he can use, like Mugabe did in Zimbabwe, if you get it first, you can use it, but then you pass it on to the next one, it's worthless. Um, and therefore, I think it would be like Einstein said, you know, you can't solve a, a debt problem by the same, he didn't say debt, but you can't solve a problem by the same means yes. that created the problem. Uh, and I think that the, and therefore, I think we're going to get to the point fairly soon now, in the next few years, when the sheer weight of money and the sheer weight of debt will put such pressure on the world economy and that bond market will start to implode. And I think we are going, the, the surprise is going to be interest rates going up and going up dramatically mm -hmm. because I think central banks will lose control of interest rates uh, in the end and their long rates will start to go up and then they'll pull the short rates up and then we are in trouble with all this debt we have of course and then there'll be more money printing even. Definitely, I mean, that's, we, we shouldn't forget, I, I think it's always interesting when, um, let's say, more mainstream economists say, no, no, there's, there's no inflation. Actually, the, the problem is that there's a lack of inflation. Yeah. I say, okay, how do you define inflation? Yeah. Yeah, and, you know, based on the Austrian School of Economics, inflation basically means an increase in the money supply, which is the first stage. Second stage is asset price inflation, and only the third stage is actually price inflation yeah, that is measured by those kind of yeah, artificial yeah. And, and weird baskets and, and economic numbers published by bureaucrats. Um, but we, are, we have seen the first two stages. We are seeing massive monetary uh, inflation, we are seeing massive asset price inflation. Real estate markets all over the wo world are at their all-time highs. The art market is going crazy. We're having a bond market that is trading at all-time highs. Yeah, yeah. Just to give you one number, the, uh, the, the amount of bonds with negative yields, so if you buy them now, it's a, yeah. it's a guaranteed loss that you're making. Absolutely. Yeah, It's 13 trillion US dollars. Oh, yeah. That's a combined GDP of Japan, yeah. Germany, um, India and the UK. So that's that's big money. But uh, can I just interrupt of you? Course. Because it's not just that they're going to get negative interest on the, which is sound absolutely ridiculous, a crazy system, and shouldn't shouldn't exist because it defies all the laws of nature and supply and demand. But it's also that you know they are a the currency they invest in is probably going to be worth very little when they get it back. Uh, and, and thirdly, the institution that they actually uh, uh, are, are buying from, whether it's a, a, a government of some kind, uh, they are probably not going to be re repaying the debt because this debt is never going to be repaid. You know, 200, 250 uh, or 60 trillion of debt in the world is not going to be repaid, in my view. So those are the risks yes, that yes, investors have yes. today, and that's why you and I are in gold yes. uh, or, or trying to help a few people to, uh, to preserve their wealth in gold. But you know, we know that we are reaching half a percent of world financial assets. That's all that is in gold today uh, of investment money, and which is nothing. So nobody has enough protection if things happen that we expect hyperinflation, defaults, etc. And you know, I'm some people, so we do for, for bigger investors, quarter of a million up to millions or tens of millions help them buy physical gold. 
But people ask me, what about our small investors? Why can't you help us? But you know, small investors, I always say, you can buy a gram of gold a month or whatever, instead mm. of a packs of cigarettes or a beer mm. or, or whatever, and the gram of gold is about 40 euros, let's say, or, or $50. And if you do that every month, and if the Venezuelans had done that 10 years ago, they would all have had, or the ones who did would have had yeah. food on the yeah. table, etc. So people are, not, people are not even aware of gold. We are trying to, you are doing a fantastic job in, 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 in taking this message to a big audience, and I'm doing it in, in, in a slightly different way, but, but sadly, since the media and the politicians and the bankers are not interested, we are not reaching enough people, and therefore, you know, sadly, people are going to rush, as everything else, into gold once it's on the front pages, once it's on the television, and at much, much higher prices. Do you think we can do anything more about what we're doing? No, I think it's, it, it, it's probably no coincidence that, that the fundamental laws of economics and of finance are, are not taught in school no. and university. And actually, I, I, I am amazed that so many people that I consider very, very smart and very well educated have got no clue about money and, 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 and about how money is created in our system. Yeah. So, so yeah, I think we're doing um, our little part to, to, to explain what's going on yeah, and, and, and give solutions. Um, and actually, you know, as, as you said at the beginning with your uh, Eton example, um, you know, I've got three kids, yeah, and, yeah. and, 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 and I really hope that um, they've got a, a prosperous life and there will be, um, they have to be prepared for certain scenarios, but yeah. I think it's very important not to be only prepared financially, but also psychologically, Absolutely. yeah. So uh, know what can happen, yeah. yeah. Think about those risks, yeah, and, 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 and hope for the best and prepare for the worst, yeah, basically. Yeah. No, you're right. You can do what you can with insurance and having some gold. and, and, and for the, Everybody can do it. Everybody should do it. But still, what you have in the long run, you know, you can't give your children. We have nine grandchildren. You know, you give them a little bit of what you can now. But the most import, important thing to give them, except, of course, for, for love, is actually that they understand what's happening, you know, and that they use their brain and they use their heart. Yeah, that's, exactly. what take, that's what carries us forward in life. And then... Uh, Few good friends um, and and the family. That's really what counts because your money is ephemeral; it can disappear overnight. Uh, but your brain and your heart continues if you use it well. Exactly. So that's so that's yeah. Well, Ronnie, it was great to talk to you, Thank and you. Uh, good to see you here. And and I'll see you in Zurich next week. Uh, so in the meantime, thanks for taking part. Thank you. And enjoy Thank you very much. Thank you very Thank much. You. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you.